Robert Whittaker versus Kelvin Gastelum. Now, what really happened in this fight? A masterclass performance by Robert Whittaker showing all of his skill. Looked better tonight than I've ever seen him. And I'll actually go and say that this is the second best performance of the year after Max Holloway and one of the greatest performances of all time. When you really zone in on the details of what Robert Whittaker did to Kelvin here. Because Whittaker had to get all technical on us, there was a lot that was missed. For one, of course, Kelvin Gastelum was going to be the aggressor. He was trying to land the power punches and not wrestle as much that he showed in his previous fight. For the majority of the fight, he was trying to punch Robert Whittaker's lights out, using a speed that he thought he would match Whittaker with, but ultimately he was not able to. Whittaker was the bigger guy, he was the faster guy, and he was the more technical guy, able to avoid nearly everything Gaslam threw at him, whether it be checking the leg kicks, blocking almost all left hands, fading out away from the right hands, moving away from the jabs. Whittaker did everything to get away from Kelvin's dangerous punches. Gaslam's main way of catching Whitaker was to get him as close to the cage as possible, so Whitaker could not easily get away off angles. Whitaker is very good at fading out, and the closer to the cage he is, the tighter the angles are going to be ultimately running into some of those looping punches that Gaslam throws out there. And those are like the only times where Gaslam was able to connect on Whitaker. Whitaker just made the mistake of allowing himself to get backed up so much without throwing any offense forward to relieve himself of the pressure. This is a very rare thing to happen. Kelvin didn't normally get Whitaker on the cage like this. It was only like two times in the entire fight. But those are the times where Kelvin landed the best. As you can see, when Kelvin throws a left overhand, Whitaker is able to block it effectively and off the retraction of the big punch, he tries to fade out away from that side which creates enough distance for him to get away from the right hook as well. But he runs into the cage because of the tighter angle. He's way too close to the cage to get away. And ultimately, Kelvin was able to hunt him down with the right hook and land a big left hand behind the ear. This is a punch that Gaslam has knocked out so many opponents with, but Whitaker takes it very well, man. Behind the ear too? Kind of crazy. But Kelvin went for the same kind of combination. He had that same one-dimensional combo that he throws in every single fight. The jab into a left overhand or a right hook into a left overhand, covering a lot of distance forward because of its forward and back motion. Kelvin is always moving forward and back. He's always bouncing. And because of that, he's always loading up his spring. He's coiling up to explode forward first with the jab to measure distance. After the jab, he takes a deep outside step, carrying that same momentum into the left overhand. That is the full punch he's committing with. And after Whitaker was able to block the left hand and fade out away from that left side, Kelvin was trying to intercept him with the right hook after this combination. So it'd be step, jab, step, left overhand, right hook. After the left overhand, there wasn't much movement from Kelvin to intercept Robert Whitaker effectively. Whitaker developed the answer to this combination as the fight was playing out. You saw in the first round that Kelvin was actually able to land this first combination on Robert Whitaker. Kelvin hops forward with the jab to measure and get in distance. Whitaker, for the first time this came at him, he will lean away from the jab, ultimately putting himself in place. He didn't use any footwork to get away from this, and he tried to counter Kelvin Gaslam with the left hook but Kelvin ducks under when he throws his left overhand, which gets him under the left hook, and ultimately because Robert Whittaker planted himself for his counter shot, he falls into Kelvin's left hand. So what did Whittaker do after this? He will look to lean away from the jab again, and see that the left hand was coming at him. He wasn't going to counter after the jab with power. He was going to be focused on the left hand that came after Kelvin's jab, so he goes to block it. And after this time, he blocks nearly every single left hand. So it was a one-time adjustment to block the left hand. So Kelvin now had to make his adjustment knowing that Robert Whittaker has that locked down. So after the coiling spring, explodes forward with the jab and looks for the left overhand that Robert Whittaker is looking to block and move away from, Kelvin wants to chain up this combo with a right hook but this never worked for him. Immediately, Robert Whitaker was able to see that winded up right hook and land on the inside with his jab, straight punch being looping punch. After this, he was able to fade out that direction as Kelvin loads up on his punches, ultimately overextending, opening up a lot of space for Whitaker to move out from. But Whitaker still made one mistake in the sequence. He had to make another adjustment. So he made the first adjustment, Kelvin made the second adjustment, and now Whitaker is making a third adjustment so he doesn't get caught by anything Kelvin does with this combo because he was still kind of getting caught by the jab because he was only leaning away. So instead of leaning back, he started to stutter step away, back step away from the jab. This not only got him away from the jab, but it made the left hand a lot easier to see coming, ultimately making the right hook 
a lot easier to see coming because when you backstep away from that jab, you're making the shorter guy, Kelvin Gaslam, have to get in closer on you, having to cover more distance in order to land his left overhand, ultimately making him extend much more for his left hand, making Whitaker a lot safer on defending this. So the final product of Rob's answer to that combo was to backstep the jab, overextending Kelvin's left overhand. He's going to intercept Kelvin after that jab with his own to measure and feel in order to block the left overhand and then either jab on the inside of the right hook that's going to come at him or fade out if he had enough space. So ultimately looking at his answer here, he simply got away from Kelvin's main combo with blocking left hands and backstepping. That's it. He made it as simple as possible. And speaking of the jab, Whitaker's jab controlled most of this fight. Not only was he using it as an intercepting weapon, as a countering weapon, but just to keep Gaslam honest in open space. Whenever Gaslam was looking to create an angle on Whitaker, Whitaker would just pop a jab out at him. We'll just call in on his jab. I mean, that's all it was. Even if it wasn't landing on Gaslam, merely throwing it out at Gaslam stopped him in his tracks and made Kelvin go another route. This played such a big factor in this fight because it gave Whitaker the space he needed. He was able to accumulate points because of the jab and ultimately made Kelvin hesitate on many angles he wanted to take, which makes Gaslam a lot more one-dimensional on his entries. The honest jab eventually turned into an honest front kick that went to the body instead of to the head, which made it all the more difficult for Kelvin to find an angle on Robert Whitaker, which ultimately makes Robert Whitaker's distance management a lot easier to keep managed. As this was playing out, the honest jab, the answer to Kelvin's combination, Whitaker stopped using the jab as much and started using his right hand instead in replacement of his jab. So instead of just keeping an honest jab on Kelvin, he was keeping an honest right cross on him. More power, more of a threat, and something Kelvin would have to respect a lot more. This showed the gradual confidence that Robert Whitaker was having throughout the fight. He stopped using his jab and started using his right hand instead. That's so crazy to think about. Kelvin would come up with the same combination and Robert would literally sit on an intercepting right straight as Kelvin runs into it, pulling away from the left overhand as he puts his right guard up. He throws the right hand and then pulls it back in position to block. This is one of the most perfect right crosses I've ever seen in MMA. His jab alone looked perfect. It looked like the perfect weapon against Kelvin, only to show that his right straight is an even better weapon. Craziness, man. You start to see Robert Whitaker check a bunch of the kicks. Whenever he got in some sort of danger where Kelvin was actually able to get in close on him, you'll see him double underhook Kelvin and take him to the ground very easily. And then this eventually turned into an easy single leg takedown that I've never seen from Robert Whitaker, especially getting on Kelvin of all people. And we of course look at the high kick combination. Robert doesn't only have one of the best jabs in the game. He doesn't only have one of the best right straights in the game. He has one of the best right high kicks in the UFC. We all know how fast Whitaker explodes forward when he blitzes forward on you. The speed is blinding, man. When he uses this, he explodes forward, either throws out a jab or throws his left hand out there making it look like a jab. This gets the opponent to back away from the left hand and attempt to parry it. Ultimately, when they back away, they're getting more aligned for the right high kick to land with the shin. Because remember, Robert Whitaker is exploding forward. He needs the opponent to back away so he can carry that momentum into the correct distance for his right shin to connect. Well, after the left hand, the right hand extends forward, but he's not using it as a right cross. The opponent thinks it's a right cross, but he's throwing it to directly measure for the high kick. Because the opponent thinks it's a right cross, they're looking to slip on it. How you effectively slip on a right cross? You slip on the outside of it. You lean on your left. Well, this is perfect for Robert Whitaker because slipping on the outside of a right cross makes you lean into a right high kick. So it's a simple fake jab, fake cross into a right high kick, making the opponent react in a way so they fall into it. And something very important to distinct here, Whitaker's right high kick is not your average right high kick. He snaps it out there. It's almost like what Don Cerrone would do sometimes, but a lot heavier. He brings his knee up and midway through, he snaps the kick out. This is a more karate based kick that he throws out at the opponent. Because the knee comes up and not the entire leg, it is harder to see when the shin and the foot are coming at you, ultimately making the already fast high kick even faster in the opponent's eyes. But the way Whitaker was using this combination was extremely intelligent because the first thing he did before he threw it the first time in the first round was he made sure to set it up and see Kelvin's reaction to it early. So 3 minutes and 33 seconds of the first round, you see him with that same step forward, that same explosion. Huge step forward, taking the outside foot, and throws out a jab in Kelvin's face to see what Kelvin would do. So Kelvin, he drops both of his hands in order to parry, and he leans away from it. Perfect distance, and he also sees that Kelvin is naturally 
sort of leaning to his left already, which makes it easier for Kelvin to slip on the outside of a right cross, which he's going to look to do. It reinforces Kelvin's slip on the outside. This is perfect from Robert Whitaker, so he goes for the high kick combination and catches Kelvin, man. But Kelvin has an iron chin on him. It just does not make sense how he's able to eat these huge shots throughout his entire career like this. And something small to point out, Robert Whitaker actually uses this setup in order to land other combinations. The same step with a fake left jab, getting Kelvin to drop his right hand. That's an opening for a left overhand for Robert Whitaker to connect cleanly. And then the high kick combo from Whitaker, he adds on more to it than just a high kick. So he goes forward, jab in Kelvin's face, right hand extends in order to measure. Kelvin gives the same reaction, leans to his left, and he goes to block the right high kick, but he's only able to get his left hand in there on time. Ultimately, the impact gets through greatly, but Kelvin's still just able to take it. Now, notice what happens after this when Whitaker retracts his right kick and looks to further on his combination. Kelvin is still focused on that side. You still see both of his hands on that side in order to block something coming from over there, which creates an opening on Kelvin's right, and Whitaker lands right through it with a big left overhand. One of the biggest punches of the entire fight. This high kick combo was so dangerous that it got great respect out of Kelvin Gastelum. To the point where Whitaker would simply come forward with a jab and show his right hand and Kelvin automatically thinks that a right high kick is going to come. Not even when he sees Whitaker's right hand. When he sees Whitaker come forward at him with a jab. The high kick like gave Kelvin PTSD. Knowing that Gastelum is reacting that quickly and that heavy, anticipating a high kick when I'm only throwing a jab? Man, there's so many things to throw at Kelvin then. There's so many things I can set up on him. There's so many openings to take if my jab is getting him to react to something that comes two steps later. I can throw a jab left hook combo. There's an opening on that side every single time. Even the one two down the center if my precision is right. I could throw the jab into a right body kick. I could throw a jab into a left high kick on that same side, almost like Wonderboy Thompson does. I can go to the legs. I can go so many areas because I know this is Kelvin's reaction and this is how much he respects my combination. And once I land these other combinations on Kelvin, it's going to confuse him on what is going to come next ultimately creating even more openings for me to take later in the fight. And this is what you do see from Robert Whitaker. So you see in the third round, 1 minute and 44 seconds, Whitaker comes out with a jab and he's showing his right hand before he fires it out there. Look where Kelvin's hands are. They're on his left side, the kind of guard to block a right high kick. But Whitaker never throws the right high kick. He just shoots down the right cross and just simply misses target. He could have easily landed this with better precision. And then after the right hand comes out there, look at Kelvin. Look at the position he's in. He is still looking to block a right high kick. He is curling up. He's turtling up for a right high kick. That's a great amount of respect out of Kelvin Gaslam. This eventually turned into other stuff. Whitaker came out with the left hand, making Kelvin think it's going to be the same combination. Puts his right hand forward, almost the exact same thing he did in the first round to land the right high kick. Look at Kelvin's hands on his left side to block a high kick, but Rob goes to the leg instead, man. Lands beautifully on the leg and then fades out. And besides the many leg kicks that he was throwing, I was really liking Whitaker's side kick to the knee. He didn't throw that often. He threw it in the fifth round mostly, but it was definitely a very effective weapon. He even mixed it up and put it into combinations, right? The side kick is not only used as a damaging weapon to the knee, but it's also used as a big sideways step, automatically putting you in place to land a left hook. It's just a very natural combination. And with that, you even had a front kick combo, one of the biggest moments of the entire fight. Whitaker hops into a lead front kick to the face, which you don't normally see at MMA. You just see a rear front kick to the face. He lands a hopping lead front kick that uppercuts Kelvin's head. You see Kelvin stumbles a little bit backwards, and Whitaker just lunges forward. Not the best footwork, to be honest here. He almost crosses his feet as he throws it, but he saw the opportunity to land a big, powerful blow as Kelvin was stumbling a little bit, and he lands that huge left overhand cleanly. Kelvin just takes it. I don't understand the guy at all. And with that moment, you had many other moments in the fight. Let's look at some of these. One thing I want to look from Kelvin in that second round, he fakes a leg kick. So Rob was checking nearly every single leg kick Kelvin was throwing at him. Very hard to do with a stance that Rob takes. A sideways stance is kind of wide. Not easy, but he was able to do it in the fight. So as Kelvin fakes a lead leg kick, Rob goes to turn his foot in order to check it. But because of the fake, look how Rob opens up up his stance and becomes so vulnerable down the center. Kelvin never used this to set up anything in the entire fight. He had a huge opening here, but it looked like he was more focused on what Rob showed him instead of what he could have saw out of this situation for himself. 
There was potential opportunities for left straights here. Use this later in the fight to open up Robert Whitaker. It just ultimately didn't come to that. But then we go further into the round, 1 minute and 56 seconds. So Rob is leading to his left. At the same time, he's showing his right side, mostly his right shoulder. From your opponent's position like this, Kelvin is potentially looking at a snappy right hand that just flies out at him. But Rob also fakes like he's going to throw a right kick. So with this, Kelvin wants to move away from that side entirely. There's too much danger being presented from that side. So he wants to move away from it and attack with a safe jab just in case. So he uses the jab and a step to his right in order to get away from Rob's right side. Again, that's where the high kick was coming from as well something that got a lot of respect out of Kelvin. But because Rob was leaning to his left, showing his right shoulder, and then showing his right kick, he wanted Kelvin to move away from that side and run into his left hook. Genius stuff by Robert Whitaker, completely playing Kelvin Gaslam here. And then we'll go to one minute and six seconds of the second round, and probably my favorite moment of the entire fight, Whitaker's skills on display here. So Kelvin hops forward, fakes his lead hand, and Whitaker does not bite on it at all. He actually shoots down and intercepts Kelvin with a left hook, combos that with a right cross that connects as well as Kelvin's throwing a winging left overhand that doesn't meet with all of its impact. Again, Robert was able to connect with his, and he connected on the inside, ultimately taking a lot of the impact off of Kelvin's left hand. But as you know from Kelvin, whenever he throws a left overhand, he throws that right hook. This is the same combo we've been talking about for the entire fight. Jab, left overhand, right hook. Whitaker was able to block the punch and fake away from Kelvin entirely. Kelvin wings out another huge left hand and Whitaker was able to manage it very well by fading out away from it, showcasing his distance management. And because Kelvin committed on that left hand so much, he overextended and got parallel, whereas Whitaker faded away into his natural stance. And he throws out a lightning quick left roundhouse kick to the head that catches Kelvin Gaslam. Just this sequence from Whitaker is such a difficult thing to pull off. Crazy how Kelvin took another high kick. Afterward, both are laser focused in front of each other trying to find an opening. And Whitaker slams a right inside leg kick, which opens Kelvin's stance to make it more parallel. Right, he's attacking the lead leg, which sends it out open, making Kelvin's stance way more square. And now it's time to go on the offensive. Rob attacks with a left hook, but the left hook is only to mask his out side foot step ultimately lining up a right high kick but the angle was a little too tight to land up high but with that he ultimately does land kind of to the body under the armpit which kind of does hurt then we go toward the end of the third round kelvin is pressure whitaker close to the cage and notice the stance and who has a better angle on who kelvin is closer to the outside foot than Robert Whitaker is. Now this is very important. Whitaker does not have as much free space on his left side to get away. That's ultimately the direction he wants to take to get away from Kelvin's left hand. But because Kelvin has kind of closed that off with a tighter angle because of his outside foot, it's gonna be hard for Whitaker to get away from the left hand. So what Whitaker does is he hops forward and takes the outside foot by also trapping that lead hand. He takes away any threat that Kelvin could throw out that direction by trapping that right hand. And by taking the outside foot, he has more free Free space. So he backs away from Kelvin after this. By checking in like that and backing away, now notice the angle of the feet that they have on each other. Now Robert Whitaker is closer to the outside foot angle. He has a lot more free space to move out on and away from Kelvin's left hand. This right here already shows Robert Whitaker's fight IQ. So Kelvin comes forward with his combination, hops in with a jab. Kelvin probably thinks that Robert Whitaker is going to back away like he normally does. But Whitaker actually hops to his left and takes an even bigger outside foot angle and throws his own jab in order to measure for his right cross that connects on Kelvin. The outside foot aligns the right cross a lot better for Robert Whitaker and gets Kelvin completely off balance, lining up a second jab for Robert Whitaker to connect cleanly. And this stuns Kelvin Gaslam. Ultimately, because of the loss of balance, Whitaker was able to get off of that angle completely and get it to the center of the cage. Just intelligent stuff by Robert Whitaker. And then we go right into the beginning of the fourth round. Kelvin pressures forward and actually goes for that single leg takedown, but Whitaker starts to fight it off. He uses that left wizard to raise up Kelvin. Kelvin abandons the single leg in order to attack in the clinch. He gets a right underhook and tries to get the left, but Whitaker closes it off and Kelvin ultimately starts going on the attack, seeing that he has nothing left to go for here. So he lands a knee to the body and Whitaker is trying to create some separation with that hand he has on the inside to frame and push Kelvin away. But right as he frames, it actually gives Kelvin more of an advantage to find enough separation in order to land a left elbow over the top. After the blow, Whitaker's frame allows him to step forward, creating more separation, and ultimately gets him in stance to land with some power, but he's in southpaw here. You never see Whitaker in southpaw. And with the step, 
Kelvin was not following suit. He was a step behind Robert Whittaker, no pun intended, and stays in the parallel stance. With the parallel stance, you cannot get away in time. The parallel stance is a lot better for lateral movement, not linear movement. Moving left and right is a lot easier for Kelvin than moving forward and back. So when he tries to step backwards, he's still in distance for Whitaker to land, and he connects big with a left overhand. And then we go to 2 minutes and 54 seconds of the fourth round. And remember we were talking about that Whitaker, he kept an honest jab, or he at least threw the jab in front of Kelvin whenever Kelvin wanted to advance or create some kind of angle. It kept Kelvin very honest. And then Robert Whitaker started landing the right hand. Well, that got the respect out of Kelvin Gaslam pretty quickly, as when Kelvin moves forward on Robert Whitaker, Whitaker takes a step back and fakes like he's going to throw a right cross. This stops Kelvin in his tracks, Due to this, Whitaker sees an opening. He darts in with a jab, and notice where Kelvin's hands go. He is already thinking about the right high kick. Both of his hands are on the left side, ultimately because Robert sees no threat from Kelvin. Kelvin's completely on the defense, expecting a high kick. Whitaker advances even further, takes a deep outside step, and snaps Kelvin's head up with a huge right uppercut. I mean, just beautiful stuff from Whitaker. Put it on Kelvin Gaslam from bell to bell. Not necessarily making it look easy, but he had to hit a level in order to put on this kind of performance against Kelvin Gaslam, because this is a fight that was supposed to happen when Whitaker was the champion. And now we know what would have happened. Most likely, they've both gotten a lot better since then, but we definitely do know right now that Whitaker is the second best middleweight in the world, and that means only one fight's ahead of him. Israel Adesanya, no other fight makes any sense. He's clearing out this division as much as Adesanya has, if not even more than Adesanya has. That's the fight that has to happen. I think it's an interesting fight if Whitaker shows up like this, maybe show some different stuff as well. I'm very curious to see if Whitaker can take down Adesanya, or at least how his takedowns will threaten Izzy to change the dynamic of the fight. I still think that Adesanya is a better striker, but if Whitaker plays his cards right and mixes up his wrestling with his striking, he could definitely go out there and win the championship again. Regardless, man, we got to see that fight. And if it would happen, it'd probably be somewhere in the fall, August, September, somewhere around there because the spring and summer are booked. So that massive fight is going to happen later this year. Gives a lot of time for preparation from both of these guys. And that is ultimately the end of the breakdown. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to thumbs up, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video that's going to probably be the podcast or the extra podcast will come first.